Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Chef D and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your Sunday night football showdown between the Indianapolis Colts and the San Francisco 49ers. Nice juicy matchup for you guys after the main slate. Uh, you got one last game left on a Sunday. Before I deep dive into that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We are currently at 534 subscribers. Let's get to 1K, and that's when there'll be a giveaway. The 1,000 subscriber will will get something, all right? I haven't figured it out yet, but you're going to get something, probably some money, all right? Cash app to you guys, no problem, all right? Let's get into this, but before I do that as well, this is the Patreon. All right. This is the content I'm putting out. This was the 10 game NBA slate. We were successful last night. I got the, the posts on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram at message SD, go there. You'll see the testimonials. You'll see the winning posts. You'll see the winning tickets. Uh, I had Kevin Durant up there. Sabonis Brogdon stack was great. Uh, Christian Wood went off, Denwitty, Lonzo Ball, Revenge Game. Like I, I have everything up there for you. If you have any questions as well, I'll help you um, with the process uh, right before lock. Okay, I'm, I'm there to help you. A lot of people subscribe to things, and there's, n there's no one there to answer questions, all right? And I'm there to help, all right? It's definitely worth signing up on Patreon, okay? The link will be down below. Now, let's get into this breakdown we have here. This can be a very, this is a very intriguing game. All right. Before I do that, let's look at the injury report. We're waiting on news about T.Y. Hilton. He did not practice Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. So that is leading towards questionable, but we'll see. If that was, he played his first game. Maybe they just wanted to slow him down, rest him a little bit, but we're going to find out uh, Sunday. We're going to find out Sunday. Uh, Darius Leonard's fine. We got outs on uh, tackle Braden Smith. Um, uh, Deanne Ture, Rock, Rocky Sin is out. That's a hit. Julian Blackman, that's a hit. But this is already a struggling, um, secondary as well. Um, they, they are very strong in stopping the run, but the secondary has been a little bit of downfall this year. Um, on the San Francisco 49ers side, you have no Javon Kinlaw, no Maurice Hurst, no Trey Lance, and no Trent Williams. That's a big hit for a team that loves to run the ball. You're losing your your number one tackle right there in Trent Williams. So that is another downgrade to the San Francisco 49ers. So we have a, a game situation where we're looking at um, J Jimmy Garoppolo, who's going to be a team that can stop the run, and but struggles in the pass department. But Garoppolo has not looked good this season, um, very up and down performances, but he is viable in our build. So the first captain I'm going to go to, so I have some guys right here, but we'll, we'll clear that out. The first guy I want to go to will be Jonathan Taylor right here. Jonathan Taylor has been outstanding um, the last few weeks against Miami, Baltimore, and Houston. He's reeling off big, big games, 23 fantasy points, 34 fantasy points, and 31, respectively. This is a very solid matchup that he has against the 49ers right now. If we're looking at um, points allowed to running backs, okay, San Francisco is second, but look who's even better. That's the Indianapolis Colts, all right? This is what I'm telling you. The strength of the Colts is stopping the run. Uh, 49ers have been solid at stopping the run, but it's more because that they can get passed on at a very high clip. All right. The reason why I love Jonathan Taylor is because they use him in a passing game as well. They're using him in both facets. He can take a catch and take it to the house, similar to what he did against uh, Baltimore. Um, so you got to have him in your builds. All right. You can't fade him. There's obviously another running back that I like. Um, uh, right as a backup, because this could be an opportunity for him to finally break out. It's been a couple weeks, but that game for the person I'm about to speak about is coming very soon. Um, the next player that I love at captain will be Carson Wentz, all right, before Garoppolo. Carson Wentz. Wentz, I think he's back with his old offensive coordinator, um, and now he's getting things clicking. Hopefully, he can get T.Y. Hilton back, but he still has enough weapons with Mo Ali Cox. Jack Doyle, Zach Pascal, Michael Pittman. Pittman should have a huge game. Um, Carson Wentz is getting things going. Um, he does uh, provide a little bit of rushing, just a little bit. Hasn't done it since week four and week two, but 
their upside is there. He's passing the ball a little more efficiently, and the running game is helping them as well. So as long as their line is 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 fine, even without Quentin Nelson, they are they are moving on and and winning these games. I think this is a very solid situation where you're gonna have the Colts as underdogs take that plus four, take that plus four for safety. Carson Wentz only has one interception this year, and he's going up against one of the worst uh, secondaries in the league. If we're going at fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, you have. Where is San Francisco? San Francisco is right there, 14th. And the key about this is the red zone. As you can see, 26 ranked in red zone <clears throat> rank. So let me just adjust this right here. And this is key. So when you're getting in the red zone, they're giving up touchdowns. All right, 1.2 TDs to wide receivers per game. That's right behind the Arizona Cardinals. So. You got to watch out for that. I think this is a good game, a breakout game for Wentz. I like the the role he's getting on. And let's move on to see if we find some other options. Obviously, Elijah Mitchell is going to be the lead back. And they're not going to stop running the ball. They're going to keep hammering the ball. How effective will he be is the question. Um, this is a very solid rush defense. I might stay away from him. Um, but if you feel like you can play Eli Mitchell, I might stay away from him. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, for this team to be successful, he's going to have to put something together. And these poor performances right here, nine fantasy points, 16. 19 was his best game against Philly. Um, he has the weapons to do it if he just want to rely on Brendan Ayuk and obviously Debo Samuel. Um, you can go this route, but I it's it's slim pickings. It's slim, it's slim pickings with all these injuries on both sides of the ball. So that's going to be the struggle. You got rain. That could be a factor. So I'm leaning towards Indy, Indianapolis and, and their type of stacks in this game environment. Um, if I'm choosing a wide receiver from San Francisco, I just spoke about it. Debo Samuel has been the lead guy um, since week one. 35 fantasy points against Detroit. He's still getting peppered with targets. Ayuk has been battling, finally, past Trent Sherfield. He's getting a little bit better, but the lead guy is Debo, and um, he's been a very solid wide receiver. A lot of people were on the Ayuk train in preseason, but that was misinformation. Debo is still the guy in this offense. All right, next, if we want to go with a pass catcher, if we want to pair it with Carson Wentz, that will be Michael Pittman at 8,800 salary. He is the new alpha on this team. T.Y. Hilton came back. He still was peppered with three uh, targets. Um, obviously, it was T.Y. Hilton's first game, so they wanted to get him some action. If he's out, then it, it boosts up Michael Pittman even more. If T.Y. Hilton is in, then you can go either or. I like both guys in lineup builds because of the holes that they have in the secondary with San Francisco. Okay, They're losing some of their pass rushers like Javon Kinlaw, and that will allow time for Carson Wentz to get down the field. So I love Michael Pittman. Okay. No George Kittle. That's a big hurt. We're waiting on news on T.Y. Hilton. Um, Brennan Ayuk has been very mediocre. This can be a pop-up game for him, possibly. Um, he can be in the pool. We'll throw him in there. Uh, a, a sneakier option that I, uh, I want to talk about can be Naeem Hines, running back. Backup running back for the Colts. Like I said, um, that secondary. There can be some opportunities where Hines can get the ball in some space, and he is very explosive, similar to what he did against Tennessee. He has six rushes, got 25 yards, but the key was to target six targets in the game, five catches, 54 yards. He has one touchdown so far this year, Um, and I'm, I'm waiting to see him uh, get another one because they're going to use him again. This is, I think this is a game environment for him that he can succeed, similar to the Seattle game in week one. He came out nine for 34 rushing and six catches on eight targets for 48 yards. That's what I want to see. That will be a very solid, you know, third tier type of option at the back end of your flex that we can throw him in there. So let's clear this out and we'll put our second wave of guys all right, Hines is going to be one of our first guys we like on that second wave. And we're going to continue to find more gems for you. Um, Mo Ali Cox has been a very essential uh, receiver in the red zone for the Indianapolis Colts and Carson Wentz. Uh, Jack Doyle's getting more snaps, but Mo Ali Cox is the better 
uh, receiving out of, you know, receiving tight end out of those two, out of those options, more reliable. And he's coming up big. Nice touchdown against Houston. Uh, three for four with 50 yards against Baltimore. Two touchdowns against the Miami Dolphins. Three for 42 and two TDs. That was a solid performance. He can be a very sneaky option um, in your flex position. And let's continue going down. Uh, Zach Pascal is viable if T.Y. Hilton is out. If T.Y. Hilton is out, then you can go Zach Pascal. He's had some boom performances, as you can see, week one and week two. Five for 38 and one TD in week one was great. Four for 43 and two touchdowns. That's if T.Y. Hilton is out. You can go Zach Pascal. Now, um, with the injury to George Kittle, uh, I can find I got another sleeper pick that can go in here in your flex, and that's Kyle Juszczyk. All right? A lot of people are going to go to Ross Dwelly, but they've been using Kyle Juszczyk um, in these weeks, as you can see, when they got injuries to the running backs, and now they're tight end. Look at these targets, all right? Consistency here. Four targets in three straight weeks against Green Bay, Seattle, and Arizona. Um, he got a touchdown against Green Bay, and that's what you need him to do. He's going to get some catches. Can he get in the end zone? He might get a carry here or there, but this is definitely someone that they're going to use to extend that running game. Kyle Juszczyk can be a very sneaky play. All right, I'm going to stay away from defenses in this game build, but we can lean on uh, kickers. Both kickers are viable, Joey Sly and now uh, Michael Badgley, who came uh, from the Chargers. All right, and if we're looking for anyone cheaper than that, can be Jack Doyle. That's one option. Uh, Trey Sermon can get some carries. So we'll throw both of those guys in there. If you need a very cheap option at the bottom of the flex, I will lean on these two besides the two defenses. And I think that's pretty much it for you guys. So we're going to lean on Indianapolis Colts in this game. Uh, I think they have the, the stronger team, more healthier team. Um, better, better, um, weapons and better quarterback. Uh, Jim Garoppolo has not been playing well. Um, and San Francisco, um, are missing some key, um, key production from, especially that tackle position. All right. And they're going to stop, be able to stop their, their best asset and that's running game. All right. Colts are very good at stopping the run. They have question marks in the passing game and you cannot trust Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo was the guy that got George Kittle injured last year because he overthrew the ball pretty much and simply led him into the defender to go straight for his knee. So there, there's a lot of question marks on Jimmy Garoppolo, but that is going to be our breakdown for the Sunday night showdown slate we got going on for the Colts and 49ers. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, sign up for the Patreon if you want exclusive content. I'm there to help. And also, don't forget to uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MetsNitchJetsD. That's where you'll see the posts, the testimonials. Uh, Everything is going to be on there. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll be back very soon. Peace out.